Hello, 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 hello. It's good to see you. Say hello. Welcome to the Huskies Hockey Podcast. Weldy and Andrew sitting here for another month. Uh, off-season news, notes, and things that we found interesting around uh, around college hockey. And uh, a little bit drier on the news, but uh, we do have a couple of big shakeups here when it comes to St. Cloud State uh, next season. Uh, so let's just uh, let's just dive in uh, on the men's side. I'm going to be honest, women's side, I got nothing. Um, I haven't heard much. Schedule was released, but we already broke that news. Uh, thanks to thanks to your sleuth reporting from the man with the with the big red gum. So that's uh, kudos to you for getting that scoop. Yeah. No, no breaking news because you already knew we already broke that news. We already broke it a few months before. So That's go back why. to previous podcast, look at uh, or to listen, I guess, to the audio version of us and unveiling the schedule, which is finally released. And we were all right. So yep. my source was correct. Eight losses, Max. That's all I see. I'm, I'm, little, I'm writing that down right now. Write that down along with uh, a 20 point. Uh, Freshman points. season. Yep, From for Del Monaco. Del Monaco. Del Monaco, 20 points. <laughs> Do you want to stake your claim with um, goals and assists there? Nope. <laughs> what would be the majority of those 20 goals, points? One assist. You're going to go Cy Young? Like yep. more, more goals than assists. I'll go more goals than assists. Okay. We need someone to be a shooter. Dang it. On that team. Let's do it. It's in my book. It's right underneath. Um, January 2024, Arizona State is finishing in sixth place in their first year in the NCHC. Still got that one down, and we're we still got to wait. Uh, well, like nine that? months now. Did you, I say that? You, you, my friend. Uh, I don't think that I don't, I would let's re- check the tape. That. that I don't. I don't oh, believe that. We don't need to check the tape because I got it right here in my notebook. So, oh, all right. It all must right. have been after one of those. Cause we talked about them. They had the, the shenanigans on Twitter, right. Uh, pumping up their resume. Is it, was that oh, the God. team? Yeah. And I had mentioned like they, they're, they hang up, they hung a banner. It's in yeah, their arena the- for the <laughs> NCAA tournament that never existed. So I think we just had Schrodinger's tournament. Yep. Some saltiness that. about Arizona state on the mind. And you were just in a, in a fiery mood and you went out. Me? And, never. You know, yeah, you are not a, a no. fan. We've got a question about Arizona State later in the show. It's, I don't yes. we usually don't tease from a legend, real uh, Twitter user too. But we'll we'll be getting back to that topic. So put a pin in that. Ooh, that's a tease, folks. Arizona tease. State. Tease. I forgot that I picked them sick. That might be too high, actually. Um, but I'll give myself a little leeway there. Um. Dave Shayak, um, who was heavily rumored uh, to be uh, replacing Grant Petolny um, for Northern Michigan. Uh, turns out that heavily rumor turned to actual rumor turned actual truth um, as he accepted the position uh, for Northern Michigan. Goes back to his alma mater. No massive surprise there. So good luck to Dave um, in his future endeavors. Um, as long as they don't play St. Cloud State, um, then I hope he loses a lot. So, um, in his place becomes, uh, a three-time stop now, three-time returning coach, uh, for your Huskies, uh, for Eric Rudd, uh, comes in, um, fresh off, uh, cause he was at, at the USHL, um, last season, I believe, you know, I believe so. I, he was at any Sioux Falls, the last time I had heard, I believe he was just there this past off season and didn't get his contract renewed. So, um, made the playoffs, didn't get his contract renewed and, um, decided to come back and he yeah. was, uh, instrumental in, um, you know, some of those, uh, uh, years, some of Motsko's, uh, uh, recruiting classes. Um, and, um, obviously has a lot of contacts, a lot of, um, you know, it's a, it's a good experience uh, back behind the bench. Someone who 
um, is really fired up and excited to come back to St. Cloud State. So we're, we're happy. Uh, I think that's a, that was a good pick. Um, and judging by uh, the rink live, uh, McCann's reporting, uh, you know, Brett Larson said he fielded about 20 to 30 calls for this position. So it's nice to see that uh, people were chomping at the bit uh, to, uh, to, to don the Cardinal in black. Yeah, as you mentioned, Rude, first stop in St. Cloud, 05 to 10, that was, it would have been, 05 was Motzko's first year, so he would have been one of his first hires as assistant uh, once Motzko got the St. Cloud job, and yeah, good run there in Husky history, um, coinciding with with Motzko's first um, big success in the, in the WCHA days. Um, he's been a well-traveled coach though. Uh, after that, um, stops throughout the USHL. I think he went to green Bay for a couple of years. As you mentioned, he was just in Sioux Falls just most recently. I mean, CC grad, he had a, uh, some time as an assistant behind CC's bench before getting the Huskies job the first time around. Then he went back there after, uh, the, that 2010 season. Um, and then came back and was the women's coach. Um, he would have been the coach right before Adelski, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah. Not much success there. Um, Rude had, obviously that's been a tough job to step into. Adelski's like the first guy in their history to kind of write the ship to the point where we're at now. I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the women's team. Uh, Rude took a swing at that and just couldn't find success. And then, went actually to Miami as an assistant. So he's, you know, left there in 2022 is working under Bergeron there. Then as mentioned, returning to the USHL most recently. So he's got a ton of experience at various programs, head coach and assistant coach. Uh, Certainly at the D one men's level, it's all been assistant uh, capacity, Uh, but um, recent experience in the conference with that Miami stop. Um, So, He's a familiar name around Husky land and around college hockey in general. Um, Been a lifer. He was on their, the CC teams uh, under Lucia when they were going to national title games in the nineties. So he's been around the block quite a bit. And I think it's a a good addition based on like what we were speculating the last show. I think the Petone job had just come open. And so it was just speculation. I don't even think Shayak had a interview at that point yet. Cause it was only a day or two after that news had broken that we recorded. Uh, but we both kind of figured it's probably Shayak's job to lose. And so this doesn't come as any shock, but we had speculated as far as what, what, if that happens, what happens with St. Cloud's assistant position? Cause it's just late in the game here in the, you know, Typically, if you're going to have a coaching shuffle assistants or head coach, you you filled those positions like months ago, ideally. Um, but and so I was like, I don't know if they're going to be able to be able to pick from a good pool of candidates. Um, but as you mentioned, there was plenty of interest in the job. I, I, I don't know because I, I, I don't know if you got the last McMahon uh, <laughs> newsletter that I forwarded you. Because uh, yes. we get the we get the show we get the shared show account, uh, but he was breaking. It, it's it 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 showed a bit of McMahon's limitations. I trust him much more on East Coast um, college hockey news, much less West, because he was making it seem that we got high. the slosh for that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, or yeah, and the Rick Live as well. It's a little bit more plugged in locally, but uh, McMahon seemed to think that this Ty Eigner, who was the the Bowling Green coach up until just a few months ago, had the inside track to this job, um, which would have been an interesting, I think I would have thought a a fairly decent hire as well. Again, again, considering the time crunch, um, thought that would have been a a decent hire. And then it was like a day later, we heard that Rude actually got the job. Um, So uh, yeah, we, we learned a lesson there. Um, at, at least we didn't go to, to, to record that night. Um, we might've been speculating on our thoughts on a guy that ended up not being hired for all we know. It never even had a official interview who knows, but, uh, Rude's the guy and, 
like I said, I think it's a good, it's a good selection uh, considering the circumstance and it's a good selection based on his resume. Um, you know, he's a guy that's got plenty of experience, plenty of experience with, with junior ranks. So I think, you know, he's going to fit into that mold with Shyak in terms of hitting the recruiting trail uh, with Larson. I don't know what his kind of contract is. If, if this was a multi-year deal or I would assume so. Um, but just based on the situation here with, with so, someone being a late in the game hire, um, if this is just going to be a stop gap and maybe next year they get a fuller uh, slate of candidates. I don't know. I'm, I'm confident uh, knowing what Rude's done with the program already that, that he can fill in Shyak's shoes admirably. And I wonder if that, if that slots him into, I would assume it slots him into the, uh, you're coaching that St. Thomas game when mm-hmm. uh, Larson's over, well, I guess not well, up in Canada for the juniors this year and, and away from the team. Cause that was Shyak's Super Bowl uh, <laughs> annual event seemingly the last few years that he would take over the team when, Larson was uh, handling assistant coaching duties with the junior team. So I would assume it's, uh, he's going to hand the keys off to rude instead this year. So we can, uh, we can blame and or praise rude from my head coaching uh, standpoint at that time too. Yep. Uh, yep. Presumably. That one weekend. It's all that matters. Yep. So um, a quick clarification though, it was um, rude was the coach up until the, um, uh, the 1819 season for the women's, um, and then Steve well, McDonald, right, Steve McDonald. Yeah. Um, was 1920 to before Adolski started in, uh, 20, uh, 22 and 23. I think Steve so. McDonald would be happy that we skipped over his tenure there. So. I think, I think, uh, the women's team would be happy if we skipped <laughs> over Steve McDonald's tenure. His three years were less, you know, probably about as much fun as COVID. Um, it, so it's, uh, but uh, obviously, with the Delsky there, it's uh, it's definitely rebounded. So um, yeah, I'm I, I'm excited for what he's going to bring. Obviously, he's got the the pedigree and uh, some experience, and um, I would imagine he's going to be here for uh, you know kind of the next few years. Um, so that's uh, that's that's great to see him uh, step in. And again, uh, good luck to Shyak. And uh, speaking of another change um, that we have, um, none that actually affected uh, the ice that much, but um, I'm just kind of wondering your favorite Charlie Glockner moment um, as a St. Cloud State Husky. Um, As uh, the goaltender from Northern Michigan transfer for a fifth year, um, uh, looks like he is not going to be coming into St. Cloud State. And uh, Gavin Enright from Bemidji. Um, is going to be taking that spot contending for the goalie starting position um, in a three-way tandem slash battle slash I don't exactly know what's going to happen there Um, obviously Posh is going to be the presumable starter but um, you know Gray and Enright Enright with a little more experience obviously not amazing numbers at Bemidji um, but Bemidji being Bemidji it, it is what it is so um yeah, a little bit of a, a change there, goalie. Yeah, indeed. It, it sounds like from the McHatton reportage that they've been doing some some practicing. I don't know if these are official or like captain's practices or I don't know what the NCAA rules are, if they I, have any rules anymore based on <laughs> their, their courtroom I, w- I want to say there is like a two-week period where like you can get together officially and I think I, I don't was, know if like coaches can be there or if it's I, just all players can can do it, yeah, but not the coaches. Like Again, there's some bylaws that I I don't even care to really follow up with. But apparently, this was he had, he showed up to to whatever that practice camp get whatever together. you call it get together kumbaya. kumbaya. He, he had gotten he, he participated in that and kind of realized he he didn't really want to play hockey anymore. Um, so this isn't like injury based or eligibility based. It's a hockey decision that he's no longer back in the portal or anything. He's just done. He's, he's not going to be participating in college athletics anymore. And again, like the Chiac rude situation, being able to pivot at this late stage 
uh, and able to pick up someone in the portal to replace what we think was a third goaltender um, is at least impressive. Now, the other shoe, you mentioned it, uh, en- Enright's numbers at Bemidji are, are fairly gaudy and not gaudy in a good, uh, not gaudy good. Um, he's not cracked 890 for a save percentage in three years of, I mean, he wasn't the full-time starter in any of these years, 15 games last year, seven the year before, 13 games, and then one game in the COVID year. So add that all up. What is that? 35, 36 games, about one full season's worth of duty. If you combine it all together last year, 872 save percentage, fifth worst in the country. Um, For a while, he was dead last. I remember, I think when St. Cloud was playing Bemidji, I checked the numbers and he was either at the bottom or very close to it. Um, And yeah, that's not starting time, but that's not negligible time either. Uh, It reminds me of when Bassey came aboard and looking at his numbers and they weren't real sharp either. I don't think he had cracked 90%. We were sort of a little skeptical. I ended up like... After he had his first year at St. Cloud, I probably overrated him. Even though I might have been a little too critical looking just at those CC numbers, I was probably right to be critical looking at the CC numbers, as it turned out, based on his second season at St. Cloud. But Enright's numbers are even worse than that with a, a, in a worse league as well. So, I mean, I'm not like excited if, if this mean, if it turns out that Gavin Enright is going to be the main, main starter for St. Cloud this year, that gives me no confidence at all. That gives me like, can we get Bassey back vibes? <laughs> but I would assume if he's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to be there. I, I think it would have to be a pretty, pretty, pretty bad season for me to get to. A, I want Bassey back. Yes. Again, I'll show you these Enright numbers from last year. Um, that's that's fine, but I can't like. Is he, I like I I don't expect him to contend for playing time. Well, I mean, I if think we're, our, if our we're best playing him over Gray, I think I'd be upset. Correct. I, I think our best case scenario is is that Posh takes this job by the Bullhorns, and that yeah. The, Enright, Gray, we forget about those names because it's Posh's job to lose, and he's I doing nothing I'd, I'd like to see to lose it. I wouldn't mind Cocaine Bear being back in the net and uh, get, battling with Posh. I, I wouldn't mind a tandem like that. I, if I wouldn't mind that either. My hmm. concern is this isn't just a Larson criticism; it's just a coach's criticism in general. Push comes to shove between two unknowns, they're going to go with the experience. So I almost think that does this mean that Enright slotted ahead of gray, like two versus three, even though I would personally would put gray above Enright. And maybe that's, maybe that's not fair to either of those goalies. Like we've got some data on Enright. We don't have data on gray. We've got one game's worth. We've got one game. Right. That's, the best thing that he's got going for him and the worst thing that he's got going for him. Um, so I don't know. And what a game it was. They didn't lose. He didn't lose. And um, it was, I was, it was a chaotic evil. Like if you're a D and D alignment grid of a goaltending style, he is in the chaotic evil. <laughs> he was, he was amped up. He was all over the place. He made, Bobby Geppert type saves for better or worse. And he literally, I'm just checking. He literally just played that one game. He didn't even get into any other action. That is correct. Yeah. That's a weird line for a career. (laughs) Zero, zero and one with a 0.92 GAA and a 955 save. Five save percentage. Looks pretty good. And if I remember correctly, that was what the one-to-one tie after Omaha. That Omaha yeah. home, Omaha home game disaster Friday game God. that was <laughs> that was the that was the turning point in the year. I think I I yep. dubbed it that after the like in in the freshly after the season had ended. I looked back on it and that's really where the worm turned. 
I thought yeah. it was that Friday Omaha game. So maybe it was Cocaine Bear who should have ran with him a little bit more often. Should have ran, yeah. But, exactly. So I don't know. I, I hope this is a moot goalie switch uh, and right for Glockner and that and right does an admirable job as a practice goaltender. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see a little bit of him at least. I wouldn't be necessarily opposed to it. Guy can put up bad numbers one year and, and turn it around. Uh, miracles do happen. So uh, we'll, expecting and hoping for some solid contributions. If not, I really not thinking and hoping that this is going to be our starter this year. And I don't think so either, but injuries happen. Unforeseen things happen. Uh, it's good to have the depth. And the one thing that Enright has going for him, if not numbers, good numbers, at least is that he does have experience. Yep. And I don't know. We've got that Bemidji series too. Maybe you put him into one of those games. There you like go. A, like a chip on his shoulder kind of weekend, or at least and a game. It, 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 it harkens back to uh, Adam Cool and that, and you put Dan Chronic out there, there against you know. Duluth, and uh, all of a sudden it's a it's a three to one Huskies win with uh, uh, Dan Chronic scoring two goals somehow. There, there you so, go. It's right there. That's that, that. That's a reference that the young people will be like, "Oh yeah, totally." <laughs> um, <laughs> also, uh, a little bit of so apparently on the rink live on the article it said by the end of camp, Glockner decided to retire due to pain from past injuries. Oh, okay. So, so I'm not a, I'm not a very good reader, or my my reading comprehension is is off. So injury yeah, related, you, you, you skim. That's fine. Um, now, so yeah, I mean maybe injuries and maybe it's like, it's just not worth it. Especially if you're going to be riding third string, you know, it's some of that commitment. Maybe you don't want to be part of it. Um, I wonder or, if that means he's just going to not go like, just go to a job now. Is he going to, cause this was, as you said, yeah. his fifth year. Maybe. And I guess he could stick into whatever grad program he's at in St. Cloud, but uh, I don't know if this ends his entire college academic career as much as, uh, along with his uh, athletic career. I'm not sure. Let us know, Charlie. Let us know. Hey, Charlie, if you're listening, big fan of the show, I've heard. So, um, uh, we had the draft, uh, NHL draft. A couple of future Huskies were drafted, um, in, uh, to the NHL, uh, Colin Ralph, uh, second round pick for St. Louis. Um, expect him next year. Tanner Hendricks, uh, fourth round pick from Columbus. Um, and he, I would assume next year, he's a little bit on the young side, but I would imagine as a fourth round pick, they'd want him up here. And then Austin Bernovic, who will be here this year, uh, six round pick from, um, uh, went to the Atlanta, uh, Anaheim ducks. So three... Ralph, he said Ralph's coming in this fall. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hendricks at 17 right now, but did have a season at the USHL. Um, I think if this was pre portal, not saying it's all about the portal, but just like, let's say three years. Certainly the further back you go, the more academic of a question this would be, he would be spending another full year at juniors this year. And then next year as well. But now that he's drafted, it raises his level his stock value, let's say, and seeing what's happened with other drafted players for the Huskies, like Ralph and Clark from last year, you get drafted and especially in the dog eat dog world of recruiting. Now you, you bring them in maybe a year too soon rather than wait. We, we know what happened with Leo Gruba. Um, and so I would expect Hendricks to come in next year. Um, three draft picks this year, and congrats to I all got, of those. I got a question for you, sure. and I, I and, and maybe this is a little bit off topic, but you brought Gruba up. What do you think happened there? Because I think we might have differing opinions on what happened. I'm not sure. Uh, what can't, I can't. Now I can't remember if we've talked about this even in the past or anything along those lines. But if, if like, like, because you, because it 
your last comment made it sound like it was that basically it was St. Cloud's decision to have him go back for another year of juniors. Gruba got pissed and decommitted. That would definitely be the cynical way to uh, evaluate the situation. We we don't know what the actual story was unless you. Oh God, no. Yeah, we have no clue. But no. But I, I'm just curious on what you think. I mean, that's one possibility. Not that they, it could have been like, we just don't, ideally, we want to bring you in next year, either a numbers game that they currently had, or, because I don't think they would have had any, he was, was he like MVP of the playoffs of the USHL last season? So we're talking like this time last year. Um, his stock was as high as it could have been. Like, I don't know what he needed to do for another full year at the USHL level. Um, and then it, but then there was the Nick Oliver situation. You remember that where he was the coach at Fargo. Then he moves to Wisconsin to be their assistant. We thought that might have some implications there. And I was skeptical at that. I'm like, who really sticks around for another year of juniors just because they love their coach. Like that doesn't really make much sense. It, things really never really added up. The fact that you had already draft, you'd already committed him the year prior to that. So 2022, you had him do mm-hmm. another, he was coming off a good NAHL season. He does one full year at USHL and he had a very good year there. Ended it off, like I said, with postseason accolades. The trajectory was just sitting there for him to be, brought into St. Cloud for 20, the 23, 24 season. And when that didn't happen, I don't know what exactly happened. And then the fact that they brought in right, right around this time, it was announced that Clark was coming in. And when that, when that was announced, that made zero sense because this was coming on the heels that Gruba, that we knew Gruba was going back to Fargo. Mm-hmm. He had not decommitted yet, but not officially, they said, not out. It wasn't out there yet, at least. That wasn't, I think, until like late August or maybe early September even. Um, now, and and that's where I'm like, because he, like, Gruba, and I don't want to go too much about talking about a guy who's not coming here anyway, um, who's in, to quote Mr. Wonderful, who's dead to me. Um, but it's, because to me what happened and and it line and to me it's Occam's razor, right? So it makes the most sense. Whereas we got in early, he committed to us. His stock rose so much, he wanted to go to a higher program, so he decommitted. That could be another. That's another possible scenario. I, I think that's the most likely scenario. Because because and 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 then he's like, oh, I've got all this other things going on. I think Larson wanted him last because again, he is potent right-handed defenseman which is to quote what mac from always sunny he's a power hitting second baseman in the national league you don't get that in regard to chase utley his dad um so and i mean you you, it's tough to find those types of players and the fact that like larson would want him to go back for another year juniors i don't think is the case i i think he wanted to go to a higher program slash a big 10 school. And that's eventually what happened. And I would want to believe that that's the preferred narrative. I'm sure for Larson, it takes the blame off of him for sure. Um, And that's the, that's the narrative I would prefer. The the the, blame's on him no matter what, because he didn't get them. (laughs) So like there's still blame on him, but the, the timing is what's strange. If if it would have, if he would have decommitted a week later, we hear that Clark's coming in as his replacement, basically for the roster. And like he didn't need to commit to the Gophers right away, but if he would have just announced he was decommitting from St. Cloud, I don't. That, I that don't would think and then that would make sense for decommitments, though. You announce when you commit. You don't really go out and say, "Hey, I'm decommitting from Flint Hill and the Blank." Remember, he he gave that interview with with your buddy Jess Myers. Oh, that it. was in like late. That was like around Labor Day, and Myers gave him the softball question about how you're thinking about St. Cloud. That's your commitment, and he gave a pat answer about love it. My dad went there, and blah 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 blah. So again. And maybe again, maybe there's 
aid issues that he, he, you don't want to divulge that you're decommitting and then committing to the Gophers for various money-based or aid-based reasons. I, I don't know. Um, just the timeline. And if you go back to some of our summer podcasts last year, or at least the the one after he decommitted, which been what the S- September show, we would have speculated some of this as well. Um, I, it, the fact that, and then he's, he's bringing in Ralph this year. He brought in Clark last year. I think Clark was certainly a year early. Um, Ralph, I think has a better, I mean, just based on the fact that he was drafted the second round, a little bit better prospect than, than Clark. So it might not be apples to apples, but, um, again, like I said, five years ago, I think that you would want uh, Ralph to go back to juniors this year, if this was college hockey circa 2019, but it's more of the wild West now when it comes to recruits and the response of him bringing guys in a little earlier okay. might be in response to being burned by Gruba by telling him that he didn't have room for him last year. But again, it, it's it's probably one of those two things. It's either <laughs> Larson said we don't got the it's room for you, say, I mean, that's or true. that Gruba said, "Yeah, I'm I'm hot, you know what, and I'm too cool for St. Cloud." It's probably one of those two, and I, I have we probably will never know. Yeah, we won't. So, unless Leo, I know you're a big fan of the show, uh, write into us and and uh, let us know what happened. I'll, I'll promise it'll be anonymous. And I don't think like I'm trying to look. <laughs> did Gruba end up getting drafted? I don't think no. he did. No, that, so, that, but he was he aged out of drafting because he was a late bloomer and his stock bloomer. rose afterwards. So I think that yeah, I think that so he's a free agent now. He was proposed to be drafted that 2022 draft which was right after st cloud committed him out of the nhl mm-hmm. and he didn't get drafted then is do, it tw- is it 20 or 21 a lot of nahl players even get drafted i don't know more so nowadays um oh, yeah. we'll get back to that a little bit i, I have something to add to that but Ooh. um but well, like barrett hall was drafted the same class that same year 2022 and he was out of the na he, play, he ended up playing the USHL last year, but, um, or he play, he started the year at the NHL, finished it at the USHL, but he, he, I think he only played maybe a handful of games at the USHL before he got drafted. Hmm. So it was an impactful few games. Apparently. So he, I think he was, yeah, he, he had more NA experience than USHL experience at that point. It's certainly not as uncommon as it used to be. Um, but yeah, three guys drafted this year. It's a pretty good haul for St. Cloud. Um, yep, very much so. Third most in the conference. Obviously, Denver had a haul five or six, and North Dakota had three or four um, drafted as well. And then St. Cloud's with three. And when I was reading that that Mick Hatton write-up about the, the St. Cloud draftees, he had mentioned most draftees for a St. Cloud most St. Cloud connected selections in the NHL draft since 2009, when they had seven players drafted the 09 draft. I'm like, oh, no, right in the thick of me being a season ticket holder. I don't remember that. You feel like that would have been hyped like to a large degree, like seven draft picks for like a big 10 school these days is a lot. Mm-hmm. Seven draft picks for St. Cloud in the aughts uh, surprised me. So I had to go back. I said that I was was teasing a a, a trivia question. We don't even have to do a random box score to go back in time for this show. I want you to name the seven players that were drafted (laughs) in that Oh nine draft. Name the seven drafted players. And I can give you hints if you want. I mean, you've heard of all these players. Okay. They They all play. They all played for St. Cloud. I don't, think any of these players yeah all of these would have been freshmen in 09 there might have been one that started in 10 so there was no like current players that were drafted okay i think there might be one actually that was it that had been on the team before i can check on that um all but five of these 
or sorry, five of the seven. So all but two appeared in the NHL. Ooh, okay. Two of them are still current NHLers. Two current NHLers. Yep. Well, okay. You're giving me a lot of hints here. And another one we have mentioned already in this show in a different context. We mentioned in this show? Just in the last segment in the Leah Gruba discussion. <laughs> So I don't know where you want to start. The, the the first, the highest drafted of these players was third round. Okay. So they had two third round selections, one fourth, one fifth, and then three in the seventh. Wow. God, good job. I mean, I guess, I mean, that makes sense because, and then, you know, some of the really good teams there. Um, all right. I'm going to go. Okay. You said two current ones, two current NHLers. Okay, I'm going to go with the two, the two that make the most sense for me. The Kings loved the... So I think they were the Kings draft. Um, Gravel? Good guess, but no. He would have no. been a couple years after. Oh, would he have been? Okay. Um... The the other one was Dowd. Correct. And he was the last of the picks. Oh, well, so, good for him. Number 198 on the board. And he mentioned NAHL drafted tidbit trivia trid, tidbit. Only NAHL draftee in this draft was Nick Dowd out of the NAHL. Huh. I'm sure that number is higher than one. Uh, in the 2024 <laughs> draft so okay fair enough so think about that like 15 years you go from one guy being drafted out of that league to yeah it's certainly not the ushl or the major juniors obviously but much more than much more common occurrence to have an nhl player drafted so yes you've got the last of the seven i got the last of the, the seven hey all right um and he was a a Kings draft pick, as you said. So yeah, correct. I, th- I thought Gravel too, but he was drafted by the Kings, but he would have been drafted like okay, ten, eleven, twelve, somewhere in that in that range. Okay, I think Lazat was after. Yeah, well after. Uh, well after. So Kings, who's act? Oh, um, Jensen. Correct. He was the fifth round, and is he drafted by Detroit? Yes. Yeah, he was drafted by Detroit. Where is he now? Did he just sign with somebody? Um, I know he was with... Yeah, he just signed with Ottawa or traded there or something, but um, many years many years with the Capitals. And now he's uh, north of the border in mm-hmm. Ottawa. So that you got two of the seven. Okay. Um, who did we talk about in that... I thought you were going to go with the Chalowski about bringing him in, but he left early, and I don't think he was, he was that 2017, early. 2017, I think he was. Yeah. He was during um, our, first, our first run of the podcast. Oh, geez. Coach um, Oliver. Nick Oliver. That's right. Fourth rounder um, taken by Nashville and taken out of Rosa. Yep, you remember, you remember yep. Oliver had a lot of hype coming out mm-hmm. of high school and – from a points perspective, yes, he was captain and obviously he's turned into some good coaching material, but from an on the ice points production standpoint, fairly. It didn't really get there. It yeah. didn't get there with him. So you got uh, three. I got three. And just um, one one wrong guess, which is good. Hey, there we go. I'm trying to go through some of the list of those. Um, the, those teams, let's see, Marvin. It's a good guess, but no, no. I wonder if he was. Roe Ro was probably before that. Roe was drafted. I believe Lash wasn't. Roe is not on this list. Who's still playing and re-signed yeah. again um, in the AHL. So he didn't, he win the, 
was he on the team that won the whatever yeah. Calder Cup? Mm-hmm. And he was was he on one of those uh, hodgepodge uh, Olympic teams that they put yeah. together? Yeah. Yep. When uh, they uh, didn't uh, didn't have the pros go. Trying to find, I'm, I'm looking up to see if, if Roe was drafted because I didn't think that he was. Ah, he was 08, seventh 08. round. Okay. By yeah. the Kings. Uh, by the Kings. Yeah. The Kings love, yeah. The Kings loved, uh, it was that Rob Blake era because mm-hmm. he, he was always, he was like one of their, either the GM or assistant. Yeah. He mentioned he liked St. Cloud players. See, not, not Ryu, not, oh, not no. Zapkowitz. Oh, no. <laughs> I can give you, um, I'll give you some hints. Uh, goalie. Goalie. Oh, Lee. Mike Lee. Mike Lee. He was third round, 91st overall. Never to... beat North Dakota. <laughs> yeah. Go. Yeah. My favorite goalie. In other words, if you want to <laughs> revisit some of our long winded and, and spirited debates and spirited. Yeah. Now he was like love, it, love his family though. I got I got pretty drunk and got buddied up with their family a couple times at old Chicago uh, back uh, back in the day. So and so big shout out to their family. I never brought up the fact that he never beat North Dakota. And I had to I had to say the thing where two guys did make the pros, but the other five were uh, like because Lee never got into a game. Mm-hmm. But he was suited up as like a backup goalie for a game or two. He collected NHL per diem, but he actually never got into a game. So he's very close. He's the Moonlight Graham of <laughs> NHL goalies. Uh, and you talk about mentioning like Oliver's hype coming out of high school for him, but Lee coming oh, out of Fargo. Lord, Ol- Lordson. Oliver, Oliver. I, I, I was going on this, my <laughs> Mike Lee nostalgia tour. And you picked up. I thought that was going to be. I think there's one is tougher, but you got Lords in seventh round, 196 overall. That's so right, the Great Dane. <laughs> yes, I but liked Lords. I liked how Lords played that first year, and I'm I'm going to look at him too because I thought he may have debuted the that 0809 season, and then he was drafted. Or maybe I just might have my years off. But he uh, drafted by, yeah. So his first, his freshman year was 08, 09 for the Huskies. And I remember that year he was rough. Like we yeah. thought that like Chalowski was a little rough his freshman year. Lordson <laughs> was was rough. Um, d- a difficult transition for him to make from Denmark to the WCHA of those days. But this last two years, and, I thought like, was serviceable, and he ended up playing a you know handful of games with, the, uh, with games the Flyers for, for the Flyers, yeah, uh, under Torts, I believe, right? Um, that I'm not sure, but yeah, I remember his first year being kind of a little bit lanky out there. Um, and then Hanowski, that's correct. He was the highest oh. highest of the picks. At 63 yep. overall. In the and then he round. got into a game. I think he scored in his debut game, too. It was against the, the Wild. It was against the yep. Wild. And yep. I don't because... know if he played more than another game or two more than that. Yep. Because he because he is kind of a fit footnote because he was drafted by Pittsburgh. Correct. Right? And um, he was like one of the others that was tossed in, in the Aginla trade. So that, that's right. So, so he was one of the others tossed in. So he went to Calgary and then scored in his debut. And I think I remember Motsko was in the, uh, was in a suite also like high-fiving everyone. He was, he was popped and it was kind of a garbage goal. <laughs> it's kind of a, and then now Deerwood bank uh, spokesperson. That's right. right. So go talk to Anowski if you want loans, apparently. And reminisce about so 16 NHL games. I would have thought it would have been oh, like wow, two 16. or three, but How many just points, the, just the one? one goal and two assists. Oh, okay. So three points total spent five years in, in Germany. 
the last five years of his pro career overseas. And, but, and getting back to, to Lee as well, but with Hanelski and then Oliver, Hanelski and Lee in particular, the hype that they had coming into St. Cloud, Hanelski put, putting up his huge uh, high school career yeah. at Little Falls, and then Lee uh, winning a Clark Cup for the Fargo Force, I believe, USHL, coached by Blaze, if you remember, mm-hmm. and Blaze went on record saying St. Cloud's going to win a national title with him. Win in, national in title that, with him in that. Which yep. it's just the curse of death for Mike <laughs> Lee. Um, Especially coming from Blaze. Yeah. And maybe it was like four dimensional chess because he knew he was going to take that Omaha job eventually. <laughs> he needed to reverse jinx uh, a, a conference rival goaltender at that point. But. But yeah. hey, I still I still think uh, Dean Blaze for starting Andy Collar instead of Carl Gehring. <laughs> still come back to that <laughs> one, o, o one uh, frozen. Thank you fa- for that fro- uh, final five. Final title. five. <laughs> right. What was he thinking? Anyway, so this is where you're going to earn your lunch money. Oh, the yeah. Last, this I the last I one out here. Give me a position. Seventh round. He's a forward. Um, forward. Never played in the NHL. Um, he, this, I think this clue, you'll, you'll get it. Um, he ended up leaving St. Cloud mid season. Not Mosey. Nope. Not Mosey. But it would have been that same year because <laughs> it was Hep and Mosey got yeah, kicked Hep, off Mosey. for oh, discipline. Oh, Reed. Cam, Cam Reed. Reed. Cam when, Reed was drafted. Cam Reed was drafted also by Nashville. Nashville must have oh. had a, a Kings like crush on Motsko in those years. I don't didn't work really out for Nashville. Oh. Yeah, not yeah, swing and a miss on both <laughs> Oliver and Reed because not those are the two that never even got into an NHL uniform. Uh, oh and, man, my best, my my favorite favorite about cam reed is the fact that he was academically ineligible at st cloud state and his twitter handle was can't read r-e-i-d can't read 23 or whatever his number was or something oh, like that God, that's good and but it was one of those things that was god what did he say because i think he did actually an interview or someone reached out for comment it was like well, yeah, I was struggling a little bit, but it's not like I was behind or it's, it was some kind of weird quote. It was like, well, it's like, that, that's fine. Well, maybe, but, maybe he, cause he, he left shortly after that Mosey and Hep situation as well, <laughs> but his whole thing was he's go, he went to the WHL, yep. went back to the major juniors or two major juniors at that point. And then we never heard from him either at the pro level, Mm -hmm. that was the end of Cam Reed. But I'm wondering if it was more than just, I want to go to a higher, like a junior league. Maybe it was, I can't quite cut the grades. Uh, Could have been a factor of as well, but you did very well. Not many bad guesses and you got all seven without too much prompting. So yeah, that's the 09 draft, the high watermark in St. Cloud history. That's... Uh, but we'll see if this, uh, at least maybe not in the quantity, but see maybe in the quality, this 2024 class of SCSU draftees um, can match now, or top, Oliver, top the output here. Now, I know we ragged on Oliver, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think Oliver Oliver scored the game-winning goal against Michigan Tech, correct? In the no, that's Judd Peterson, I believe. Judd Peterson did. Okay, pretty sure. But uh, Brodzinski got the game tying goal. Game tying goal, with which is one of go. my favorite photos. And like Brodzinski was pretty much playing it was on, like, in the sea of ankle. the sea of green, the right? sea of green, yeah, because in, it was in Fargo. In Fargo. Um, now Brodzinski, I think had an ankle or a knee or yeah. some type of leg it's injury, a knee, I believe. Yeah. And, and just like, cause he put him on wing cause he was playing center for most of that year. And yeah, it was just, a, it was, it was him just, just a joy of elation and just shocked green faces. Um, obviously North Dakota ended up winning in the second game anyway, but. Um, I said it, we, we, we can go into random. I think we brought up this random box score before in the past. Cause I remember 
bringing up how much Michigan Tech dominated that game. 14 to 1, they outshot St. Oh, Cloud in the second yep. period. And the one shot for St. Cloud was a coastal of goal. <laughs> um, it was Judd Peterson. You got to get the Judd. guy guy from the, the, the assist. The guy gets the assist here. Uh, initials JR. JR. God, I remember it was a broken play and I think it was like a quasi breakaway for it, it, it for was Peterson. kind of a weird breakaway, but well, it was the guy that Michigan Tech defenseman kind of took a dump on the line and sprung either this guy that had the assist or probably the guy that had the assist, and then he passed it to to Peterson, who was all all alone. I think that's how the play went. Yeah. The, the bad thing is that like, when you say Jr. like in my mind, I'm just going with Jack Ryman. Yeah, <laughs> so you, it's like, you, I mean, you the, got the this. current roster. Still, get, I got the still current roster. Uh, Jr. Cause this is the one you'd have to dust this name off my brain. If I was trying to come up with okay. it, like you are. So went to Judge Brack. Peterson. He went to Brack. That's probably not a, uh, much of a, much of a, uh, clue. Jr. Oh, uh, Ray camp. Wow, you are good today. Yeah. First, first name, Joe. Joe Ray. Joey. Camp. Um, it's Joe Ray Camp in the CHN box score, so we're, oh, we're not going well, to any Joey. No nope. shenanigans. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, no, nope, because I remember because like in those years, like I mean, what we had going for us was our depth. I mean, we were so incredibly deep, and like I mean, our first and four run that year is when Bennick came and or no, not that year it was the well, year before right two um, years before two years before and th- and that's when like we had, you know we had our third line um and it was just like we, we were just so deep like no no matter what we were able to to kind of always come in those waves. Like it was Benick like Thorson, I think was on that. And, uh, Brooks Birch had, had like, it was, you know, like it was some of those D players is why we were able to make those runs. And that's why it kind of stuck. Like Joey Ray camp was one of those guys that it always surprised you when he was on the score, but like, you look back and it's like, yeah, you know, for a deaf player, he had a really solid career at St. Cloud state. 19 points that year. I would not have thought that he had 19 points for his career. That was his one good year though. Uh, 31 points total. He had three points, five points, four points, and then 19. And then 19. But that was, it was a, that was a weird year because that was the year they were barely 500. They were sixth place in the conference, but the, the NCHC was so good that year that that was, I believe the year of the Lowell sun sports freak out. (laughs) It's because St. Cloud got in over Lowell that year, but that was Kosla's bad year. If you remember, yep. You know, that his was his bad his, year of only like what? 20 some points. He goes from 33 to 40 to 26 to 54. 26 to 54. Yeah. It was his off year. I mean, Jimmy Murray, you know, his off year, he gets, goes from 25 points to 16, then back to 39 the next year. Um, yeah, but we had, I mean, Bennick, Brodzinski, Morley had Morley, a breakout, right? Yeah, Morley had a good year. Patrick Russell, this had been his okay. uh, first year for him. That, I mean, yep. in comparison, that 16 team, 15, 16 team, this was, this was like the JV version of that six, 15, 16 team. Like mm-hmm. that six, 15, 16 team was a machine. This was more of like, like a Ray, Ray camp. Uh, on that year, wasn't he like our only senior? So it was like we knew the gun was loaded at that time. Proc knows last year. Yeah, your guy Tim Daly from Wings. <laughs> Nicholas Nevalinen. Or no, he was a sophomore. No, he was a sophomore. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I got SR and SO mixed up. Uh, Brooks Birch. He's a senior. So, okay, so oh, Proc- oh, and you're our favorite guy of all time, Jared Rady. That's a senior. <laughs> and Garrett Milan. <laughs> Ah, we're oh, Scummy Milan. <laughs> <laughs> I love Scummy Milan. Oh, uh, uh, Jared, Jared Raby, you want to guess his uh, his point line that year? Oh, God. Um, let me see. I don't think we played Wisconsin that year because I know <laughs> I was at that Wisconsin goal. Um, 
how many games did he get in? He only got in 21, which I'm 21 in. games. It's more than um, I'm going to go with four points. Zero goal, goals, three, uh, zero assist. goals, two assists. <laughs> two assists. What God, is he so doing out there? That was his defense most. Well, and that's the thing. They, they list him as D. It, OK, not, you know, we know that Motsko didn't know what the hell to do with him. <laughs> um, so a lot of times nope. he was shuffling back and forth. But God, between Jared Raby and Ben Storm, like you didn't know what to do with. Like, no, <laughs> Storm would have been on this team, too. It would have been double trouble. You'd have had storms <laughs> shuffling in and out of shuffling the line or, or the, the, the depth chart or position <laughs> that would have been going on as well. Yeah. Raby six goals, eight assists, 14 points in his freshman year, which isn't bad for a freshman oh, wow. if you got the point or a forward. Then go. after that, zero, zero goals, three assists, zero goals, three assists, zero goals, two assists. <laughs> Uh, he hit his uh, his high water mark in his freshman year, and he hit his high water mark in was Wisconsin. It. And when, when I saw his goal, did I see his last goal? I might have no. seen his last goal in no, college. I'm looking it up right game. now. Dang no, it. you would have seen his fourth goal. Uh, that would have been like his hottest period as a player, though, because the game after he scored that game winner at Wisconsin, goal and an assist at home against Anchorage. And so that was he that he never had more than two points in a game. And that was that was the game of his life and the, the two week period of his life right there. You would have been there. How fortunate you are. How fortunate I would have been. Well, so I warned us that we might go down that alley <laughs> and I'm glad we did. But what else? What else? We what, it's, OK. What else? I don't think we got any other Husky news. I, I don't think so, but so Jared Raby uh, He's still going. It's still, yeah, still wants yeah. some more Raby. Okay, could you pull up his last game or his last goal that he scored what? as a Husky? Ever? So back in his freshman year. Yeah, because you uh, said it was his fourth goal that I saw? Yes. And he had, what, six? Yeah, the fifth goal would have been that week later, uh, or two weeks, I guess, later, the next game, unless I had a bye week, okay. uh, against Anchorage. And then his sixth and final goal was March 3rd against Duluth at home. March 3rd. Which would have been... Duluth oh, at home. It would have been a big goal, actually, because that was... That let's, was when let's, let's do it. Random box score. I, I'm, doing, wanna, I'm, I'm looking let, at let's, it. Let, let's head up random box score. You, who, you probably, well, you, I, you probably remember the, the scenario about this game rather than the actual game, because this would have been the last conference game of the year. And they're playing Duluth. Who's really good. They're arguably better. They were that year than the year before that they won the national. This title. was the Omaha game. Well, this was the game uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> three to three tie and three to th- Raby scores that third goal. No but, kidding. So it was, it was three to two Duluth late in the second, about a minute and a half left in the second. And Raby scores a power play goal. What the hell is he <gasps> doing on a power play? What is Motsko doing? So I wonder if he was playing like the Dan. Maybe Frank. we got to ask Rudd these questions. <laughs> he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been. Oh no, the, he, he was gone by that. He right? was gone by okay. that time. All right. But I'm wondering if he was playing like a Dan Chronic position on the power play. It's, it's got to like be like right in front garbage of garbage man in front yeah. of the crease. Uh, scores a goal from Taylor Johnson and Travis Novak. Oh, the wow. Other two good good names there. Taylor Johnson. Hanowski with the other two goals. St. Cloud got off to a two rip lead. Uh, assists from Jensen and Prochno on one of them and Gravel and Novak on the other. Okay. 20th goal for Hanowski on the year. Novak then, was so fast. He's so fast. Great so fast. penalty killer. And yep. then Duluth scores the next three to go up three to two, but it's then late in the second. Raby ties it in that power play goal. And then that third period, especially getting towards the end there. So I think it was Denver was playing Omaha. And I think Omaha had a, a late lead that they coughed up. Yep. And then, so the story was that, again, this was like, you know, the internet was obviously around, but smartphones weren't as popular as obviously they are today. So 
it wasn't as easy. There certainly was no NCHC TV or and WCHC like Twitter like wasn't a then. sports place like at that time. So Twitter the, was the like immediate Justin Bieber. Yeah, the immediate uh, yeah. nature of of getting updates was not the same, and so the story went that it Moscow hammering the us show forums. <laughs> it's what you were doing. Refresh, so, refresh. It was Moscow was was prepared to pull the goalie in overtime, even though they were tied. Um, in order to try to get home ice. Um, and it, then the word came in. <laughs> yeah, so Denver yep. Denver scores with 38 seconds left in regulation to tie it against Omaha, and then they win it. Again, this is old school, great five-on-five five overtime. Yep. Uh, not three-on-three three chintziness. So Denver then scores halfway through overtime, and somewhere down the line that message got to Matsko and he no kept, loser point no loser point and so if you lost you lost you all lost of it but you had you, you got the tie it. you got the point for the tie and the tie would have broken the tie that you had in the standings with them in, in Omaha so all they needed to do at that point was to to get out of there with a the tie and then you'd have home ice and that's exactly what happened just kind of clenching the nether regions there for the last couple of minutes in that Husky Duluth game. Uh, But they made it out alive. And then they ended up not only having the home series for the playoffs, but played that down and out Omaha team. Yeah. And And ended up sweeping them. them. Yeah. So that was, yeah. So the, the lesson is lesson is Raby doesn't score much, but when he does, (laughs) when he does, they are important goals. Or when he did that year, because he didn't any other year. Yeah. But then again, I mean, Raby from the point like doesn't exactly like uh, send urine down your boots or anything like that. You're not going to be too scared about that. Well, that's what I think. Like <laughs> you, you have the cherished memory of his game winning goal in Madison. Do you mm-hmm. remember if he was playing forward that game? He was playing forward that game. Yeah, so I, I I think his first year he was mostly forward. Yeah, and then that didn't work. And then you got into the bad limbo of Bob Botsko doesn't know what position you play. And from that point on, as we saw, 0.0 goals. So uh, funny. Um, so, yeah, that was all the St. Cloud State news that I had. Um, there was a little bit of uh, news that uh, that I wanted to bring up was uh, – uh, first, uh, historically black college university, uh, said that they were going to go D one in hockey in Tennessee state, uh, for the 25, 26 season, um, is what they have on their schedule. They had their jerseys out and looked really nice, uh, playing as an independent. So that I found was kind of cool that Tennessee state, uh, is, uh, going to be thrown into the mix. Did, did um, we see though? I thought that they're just doing club hockey like D one club. Have, have we gotten word that they're actually doing full blown D one college? Hockey? I was under the impression it was full blown D one, but I might, I was under the impression as the other way around. Okay. Um, Cause like people here with, with Arizona, they think when they say that they're D two hockey, they think that that, and then when we can go D one hockey, they're referring to club hockey. So I don't know if that's the same situation with Tennessee state. But either way, I'm pretty sure Penn State's already on the schedule. I'm <laughs> pretty sure Penn State reached out. I to was bored. State I, you'd was be like, proud of me. I, I was bored a couple weeks ago, and I googled Penn State schedule <laughs> for this year because I, I was like, "What?" Guy, I did find there was a news bit like they're hosting Army in some <laughs> one-off. It's a neutral site. I don't know where Philly or something, but they're playing Army in a in a uh, non-conference game, which oh, that, that, that tracks that um, tracks. Yep. But I, so I'm like, well, maybe they, maybe they announced the whole non-conference, but we just, we get to wait for that. We, I couldn't we, find get, it. we get to wait for these gems that uh, are going to come out for, for Penn state. We could just, we could just do it right now. I mean, two I mean, uh, home and home with a mercy Hurst, <laughs> um, uh, two games at home against uh, Robert Morris. They only go out there every five years. Yep. Um, the laws have like one. Actually, I did see. I think that they they put Quinnipiac on the schedule, which I'd give them credit. But after thirteen years of cupcakes, I mean, I, I don't know how much credit I want to give them. So I think I did see that. But so we'll we'll, we'll slot that in. There you go. And then they'll go they'll go with like um, 
I don't know, Alaska, maybe. One of the I mean, well, we Anchorage. Throw in Lindenwood. They're playing. Lind- Lindenwood. I like Lindenwood. Yeah, Lindenwood's oh, yeah. at home. Or well, Stonehill. Have they gotten Stonehill on the schedule yet? Ooh, let's go. Let's put not. Stonehill on there. Let's put Stonehill on there. I like Stonehill. Um, uh, the throwing an Alaska team. I, I like. Yeah, as I said, Alaska. So yeah. I think we got about ten. There we go. Those. Yeah. There, there's our non-conference. And for eight of those be at home. One be oh, a God, neutral yeah. site, and one be on the road in the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah, at Mercyhurst, the, uh, at Mercyhurst, or a uh, Robert Morris home and home, something like that. Like I said, they can't. They, they they already went out to Robert Morris last year, so they can't go back. Oh, that's right. For five nope, years. you got a good point. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. That's pretty much actually all I had. Um, I got a couple of questions, but um, I guess uh, around I haven't been up to date too much on coaching changes or coaching switches. I don't know if any of come down the pike which i've i learned by the way that's the real phrase is coming down the pike not coming down the pipe that kind of blew my mind but that's neither here nor there now you know i think, yeah, both, I think like, both can work i thought so i, I mean i i would think so but <laughs> bike but i'm speechless yeah um, exactly yeah i mean nothing really to report too much there clarkson filled its position uh, with former alum J- J.F. Hool. Hool. I don't know if that H is silence. Sounds very French Canadian. Not going after the union coach who had, I believe, an alum of Clarkson, which I thought might uh, lead to some other dominoes falling because then you'd have to replace the union coach. But this makes it easy. That would have been more um, fun. It would have been more fun. Um, and Patalny, I think that Patalny, he was rumored for the Wilkes Bear position, but then he ends up taking the Hartford job. But the AHL uh, just seemed weird how he kind of had to bounce around from rumor job to rumor job in the AHL before he landed on his feet. But so he's he's got his uh, his next gig. Uh, Jeff Jackson, him and his Dane. minivan, or or heading <laughs> out there. They're, they're now Hartford, Connecticut's problem. Hartford bound. Uh, he's got to switch those license plates, uh, get the title <laughs> changed over. But uh, Jeff Jackson at Notre Dame, he did the Mike Schaefer thing, except didn't pluck another team's current co- coach in the process. Uh, doing like the, the replacement on his staff and coronating him as his as his replacement will be next year. So he's going to do his final send off here and Woden is already planning. He's already got the, the birthday cake. The, the, he's got the streets all lined up and ready to go. And the champagne's on ice. And we'll be hearing a lot from Jeff Jackson on the CHN podcast this year. Me thinks, uh, well, the big one. So that the, really does The drinking game is going to be in full effect. Yeah. It's his two happens. buddies. Uh, yeah. There was going to have to be a Schaefer and Jackson super show with him and if that happens just say a prayer for adam yeah. odin that's all i have to say uh it's gonna the big... happen with adam odin sources when they're gone <laughs> of course like the only i see i haven't listened to him because i'm just i'm in off-season mode but he they've had two podcasts this podcast in, in off-season mode what are you talking about we're we're in tip-top shape well, I see we that, spent, that we spent 20 minutes talking about Jared Raby. <laughs> and I think our listener um, <laughs> savored every second of that. Oh, God. Right, right, Dan Jacobson? Yep, right. right. <laughs> A UND fan, a UMD fan. Yeah, I, I saw that the only two podcasts that the CHN's put out since the season ended is him with coaches on, the, the new coaches, Muck Alt and one of the others i, I can't remember who, yeah, but I'm he's so got excited a, to 45 minutes about lindenwood <laughs> riveting which normally i wouldn't mind listening to but i eh, just not I'll, I'll i'll crank back up and in, into the mood here like in mm, 60 days no oh, less than that I, I beginning of september i start getting jazzed so just wait and we can look forward to me in uh fully trying mode oh, there but you go. 
just, I mean, the, so that's really it for the coaching news. As far as the one piece of news relevant to college hockey that really made my eyebrow uh, curl was the news that eyebrow CCHA, curl like uh, furl eyebrows curl furl then oh, okay there we go furrowed or no, you furrow a brow yeah uh, which is a yeah so which we're going eyebrow, that, furrow, that makes more sense furrow. henry david furrow uh, it, so whatever that I, I said diversion i said once at work that uh kesha is the henry david thoreau of our generation because of the line go insane go insane throw some glitter make it rain Stand i ever when he said kesha my thought was is that the cereal brand but then i thought no that's kashi so i again kashi? off off season mode it's like health food cereal. Oh, that sounds terrible. It's not very good. Yeah, I don't want to eat it. <laughs> it's not very good. Uh, but so the one piece of what news furled that, your brow. You know, we can't even can't even get to it because I think it's I think it's the whiskey. I'm sorry, semantics. Uh, I, sw- I switched to a rye whiskey for t- for today's show. By the way, it's working like a charm. I I decided to to go between. Like I was gonna say, like maybe I'm a rye fan, so I did a blind taste test of a Russell's Reserve Rye and a Russell's Reserve Bourbon to see which one I like better. Both are delicious. <laughs> I did like the bourbon more, but it also was aged ten years versus the rye six years. I didn't know if that made a factor into it. Yeah, right. Either way, highly recommend, and it's only like thirty some dollars a bottle, so. Not sponsored. Hashtag. Not an ad. Well, thanks for doing this because I, I was needing to tap dance a little bit anyway. So hey. thank you for doing that. So, the, so the I'm also piece of drinking. News, if, I'm, if I'm ever going to say this piece of news. I'm also drinking a Lonely Blonde. And then I realized that I am a log of Ulan downstairs short of a George Thorogood. Which is <laughs> one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. But then I remembered, no, I have a rye not a bourbon so now i'm just like i am actually far away from I'm one You're third of the way from the george thorough good yeah, you got some catching up to do cca at Bull, buffalo wild wings he did that song all the time for a karaoke not a great song not a gay karaoke song in case you're wondering <laughs> don't do it if you're wondering hey i wonder if this george thorough good song do bad to the bone instead don't don't do one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. It's all about how you have no money to pay rent. That's all that song's about. It's like nine minutes long. Don't do it. The more you know. You gotta get that sounder for these type of and did I tap dance long enough? How'd I do? I yeah, I've been I think, trying. I think I interrupted you like three or four times. All right, go. A couple. I'm sorry, Andrew. <laughs> we got some news from the CCHA. Our friends over there. Uncle Don. Uh, Don Lucci is restarting a game. Kind of in freakout mode a little bit since St. Thomas spurned them. Uh, St. Thomas still in the league for this coming year, but they decide that Augustana, who has been affiliate status with CCHA for their first oh, year and, right. and was yeah. is going to be affiliate status for this coming year. 24, 25 season, uh, CCHA announced that they're just letting Augustana into the league as a full fledged member for this upcoming 2024, 2025 season, meaning that they're eligible for the postseason tournament. Um, and they can win the Mason well, or the Wagner well, like season title uh, as well as the postseason Mason cup for that matter. Um, now the fly in the ointment there for Augustana is their schedule has been set yeah, in stone for a done. while yeah. and they're only playing a limited CCHA schedule. They, they just play the other eight schools in the league, one series, either home or away. So 16 total league games where everybody else in the league uh, plays 24 games. Um, so it's going to be on paper. You'd think it'd be difficult for them to crack the top eight because their playoffs, how they're going to solve the playoff 
conundrum as far as the, how do you do the playoffs with a nine team league, similar to how St. or uh, the NCHC is going to do it. They're just going to drop the ninth place team from participation in the tournament. So it'll be the top eight teams will be eligible for the CCHA playoffs. And you'd think that with, with Augustana playing eight fewer games than everybody else, th- th- there's no way that they're going to be able to qualify. So what they did there was instead of going by the raw point totals, they were going to go, they're going to dictate the standings by point percentage by percentage rather than the raw point total, which certainly gives Augustana uh, a chance. Um, and you've got to consider this three you don't need to do point percentage just by the raw point total now again all of augustana's games this year were technically non-conference so they didn't actually rack up any conference points but if you did apply ccha point totals to their games that they played with other ccha schools this year they would have actually had more points than ferris f and state who was last place who played eight more games than augustana this year (laughs) So, and I think that it was either Hatton or someone else on the rink live. If they did the thing where they calculated point percentage for everybody this year, including Augustana and using that Augustana would have been third in the league. So it, yeah, knowing that seeing you got other kind of dogs in that conference, like Lake state and who knows how good Bowling Green's going to be or you know, Northern Michigan for that matter. Now they lost 20 guys total for last lost year like everyone yeah um, i would have to slot in augustana at least to be in the top eight um and who knows they might be a competitor might be like a top half home ice competitor uh in that league so are they all gonna be by point percentage now every team so is going it's going to all go by point percentage it's such a weird i like, I, I don't understand the the rush logic. here yeah. and the fact that you're this is the only year that saint thomas is also going to be there so this is going to be the only year that you have a nine team league i, I guess we can use the nine, nine? nine, 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 nine we don't have a good nine. enough reason to use it i think uh, uh, i think our 16 is a record it might be <laughs> uh, it's late for us, but so, yeah, I, I mean, they're going to res- return being an eight team league once St. Thomas leaves. And then Augustana, you know, was going to be a full fledged member in the 2025, 2026 season. So I, I'm not really sure other than this is a great news for Augustana. Like yeah. this gives you an opportunity to win something that you didn't have that opportunity to do this last year. And, didn't think that you're going to have that opportunity to compete for a conference title this year, but I mean, they were already eligible for the NCAA tournament. Not that that's like a legitimate, uh, you know, thing that they can compete for realistically, but so that doesn't change. I just, I don't really see the, the necessity other than maybe Lucia thinks he's got PTSD from St. Thomas leaving and sort of like Leo, Leo Gruba, thinking we got to nail down Augustana now before we give them one more year of having them think on their own and have them maybe come up with a better idea before they actually get. So maybe lock them down now before they get any crazy ideas, but didn't seem like anything that really needed to be done. And it's just sort of going to cause some confusion um, yeah. for, for the rest of that league and their fans this year, but any, any uh, CHN commentary is on probably that. panicking, trying to format the table for that one conference <laughs> to try to make sense of it. It's kind of going to be a little bit like the COVID year because that point percentage came into play for the NCHC that year because there was maybe just one game that was canceled. I know Denver was involved in it. Um, Denver would, and they couldn't, they it. couldn't, they couldn't um, reschedule it. So there was an imbalance in the number of games between the league, between the teams in the league. So for seeding the playoffs, they had to go by point percentage rather than the raw point total because that evened up the playing field, so to speak. So it's not unprecedented, but that was just in the, in the goofy COVID year. And now CCHA is voluntarily doing that for an entire season when they really didn't need to. So I, I guess the moral of the story is we're just kind of learning to 
rely on the CCHA for just some weird crap. If it, whether it's resuming a game that's been over for an hour or letting in a team a year before you, everyone agreed for them to, to be there or not have a exit fee for any of the teams in your league. I'm sure I'm missing some other shenanigans that they've done. It's just some, some odd stuff. Remember when I said uh, James Gray was the chaotic evil of goaltending? What's that about James Gray? I don't even remember what I said earlier in this podcast. Don Lucci is chaotic evil. <laughs> like, you don't know what he's going to do. He's just going to do it for the heck of it. And I, like, this makes I'm absolutely sure. no sense. I, I don't, I, I know of the bit more than I know the bit. Is he evil though? Would he be more like chaotic neutral? What's the other one? Chaotic good. Chaotic. The other good. one. He's not that. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, but you because it's the CCHA, oh, okay. it really doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> it, like if, if he was in, here. if he was in charge of the big 10, that would be chaotic evil. Uh, but with his shenanigans in the CCHA, his, his effect is muted, I would say. All right. A chaotic neutral character is an individualist who follows their own heart and generally smirks rules and traditions. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. A game is over. Uh-uh. <laughs> Bring him back out. He does the, uh, the, the Wayne Knight from Jurassic Park. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that goal shouldn't have counted. Ah, uh, uh, uh. he's got that like on a on a on a loop sound bite. Uh, it's that's good. Chaotic evil, no respect for the rules, other people's lives, or anything but their own desires, which are typically selfish and cruel. That's more James Gray. So, <laughs> I think I think you nailed it there. <laughs> it's cocaine bear i want to i want to see him in action more this year i will i'll go on the record and say that so too i hope so too so uh questions uh two questions uh one by someone i know exists the other one i i don't know but we'll we'll go from there um dan jacobson friend of the show um who thank you for um i was actually up in duluth this last uh this last week uh, for a couple of days and he recommended uh, Duluth grill uh, for me and it was incredibly good. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and you're saying on... he's the one that you say exists. Yes. Okay. I, I just wanted to make, I know Dan Jacobson exists. Okay. Um, any thoughts on the new NCAA f- uh, football video game? Uh, no, uh, but ma- mainly because I don't, i only have Nintendo uh consoles that's like nintendo purist in my household um and nintendo doesn't really get sports games so i don't really therefore get sports games um i am very happy for the people who love ncaa football though that they're getting it so kudos to you for having your moment um but he did say any chances college teams ever get added to an nhl game um now nhl games for a while have had um the uh canadian juniors um in there um now it opens up the door for the nhl games but i can't imagine them putting any extra effort into um putting in nhl or college teams into the nhl game uh, as much as i would like to see it i i don't i don't really see it happening and then you know i think to be in the game to get the licensing for the players. They gave them all like $600 in a copy of the game for free. I would imagine like the equivalent for the hockey players would be like $25 in a Chipotle coupon. Maybe, I don't know. So um, I, I would, I would love it, but I don't, I don't, I don't see it happening, but uh, it, it would be a lot of fun to, um, to, uh, to obviously play as uh, St. Cloud state. So, yeah, I, I mean, this is right up your alley here with, with video games. So let me sort of fill in the gaps for you got to help me fill in the gaps here a little bit. Because sure. I, I remember there being an NCAA football game. I remember like 
have there you played as much, but there I, hasn't been one for 10 years. Yeah, so that was my first question. So I yeah. assume based on the nature of the question is that that was Ixnade sometime mm-hmm. in the past because of like naming rights. Correct. Issues. And Mostly. now that that's yeah. going towards the players, it's going to be resurrected. Cause I remember like my mm-hmm. buddy would play it and, like Matt Leinert was just a stud, but of course he but, couldn't, couldn't name yeah, him. He was like QB seven. He was the quarterback like on yeah. USC in those years. And he was just a beast. Uh, so I remember the game. I just, I didn't know that it was being rebooted mm-hmm. and I guess that would be, that would be fun. So can you, for like the football game, the schools were on there. Yep. Like the names of the schools. So that, that wasn't a, a, a naming rights issue. So yeah, I mean, nothing seemingly would accept like the lack of an audience or a market for an NCAA. Hockey That's the game. other thing. Yeah. EA already doesn't really do anything new with the NHL franchise and they own the exclusive rights to publish uh, NHL games and they don't do it well anyway because they feel there's no money in it. So it's kind of a chicken or an egg scenario where it's like, well, yeah, you don't really do anything new with the game, so they're not going to buy it. And it's like, well, the sales aren't there, so why would we do anything new? So you don't really know what's going to what comes first. But they could, in theory, add some if they were to add to like college teams for the NHL, you just you wouldn't be able to play like a season. It would just be like you're going to play a one off game as a college team. Well, they would have modes where you would like like I think what Dan's asking is like adding that you would add modes where, yeah, you would get to the frozen four. And so you you'd be able to play seasons. like the whole and, NCHC schedule. You'd play the, yep. you know, you'd be St. Cloud and you'd play every, and then if Penn state was on there, you'd have them play all the cupcakes and then their big 10 <laughs> schedule. And, and exactly. All that. So you'd have yep. the full, the full experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be great. Um, yep. I would probably play a video game if that was the case, <laughs> but I know uh, my buddy, Eric Zamora, what he'll do is he'll create teams and put alums from the colleges in that are in the game already and put them on the respective teams. Now, some of them aren't, wouldn't fill out a roster, but you know, some of them you go deep down enough. Yeah. They'll, they'll be, they'll they'll be on the roster. So you'll have like, you know, the top line will be just, you know, North Dakota alums against like St. Cloud alums, um, that, that are on the line. So he, he'll do that. Um, uh, I don't know if he still does that, but I thought, oh, that was always kind of a cool idea. Yeah. Let me know um, if that comes to fruition. That comes to fruition. I... However, there is a management sim um, that does include college hockey. Now, I can't attest to it because I don't know if I would like that genre of game, but it's for computer um, on Steam. And it's called like Franchise Hockey Manager. And you playing the role as a general manager. And basically you can pick any team and then you'd be able to recruit, sign players, manage that aspect of it. And there is a men's college hockey mode where you would be like the head coach of a college team. And that actually has, I believe that has all the players names and, and whatnot, obviously like future recruits, like you would go and recruit players and those are all made up names. AI generated probably, but um, it has like, you know, St. Cloud state and, you know, you're recruiting and trying to get there. So that is an option. If you want like some kind of college hockey fix for video games, it's not, it's more of like a management simulator versus an actual hockey game, for instance. It's a lot of options. It's good. So, but I've heard, uh, like I said, I can't attest to that game personally, but um, I've heard like out of the park baseball, they got really famous from doing their baseball franchise manager type things like that. And I've heard about those. And, yeah. yeah. Never have done them myself, but so. Um, other question, um, from at Jeff one, five, 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 one, five, five, four. By four or five. Was it five, two? No, no, no. That one was taken. Uh, so, uh, have you seen the hall Arizona state got, uh, from the portal? 
they will win the NCHC with ease. Huh? We well, can that's... put that uh, <laughs> that hot take and prediction right next to Weldy's there we six, go. sixth place prediction for Arizona State uh, Arizona for State. this for this coming year. I did have to remind myself on this uh, on this haul, as our questioner put it. I think it's a it's a good it's a good uh, transfer portal set of additions. You got uh, Cruz Lucius um, of former Wisconsin fame, brother of Chaz Lucius. It's, it's a family of seventies porn stars, um, <laughs> but you know. Third Family of boogie nights right there. 34 <laughs> points for Wisconsin uh, last year. And uh, so he's going to Arizona state. Artem Schlain, one of the Northern Michigan cast offs. One of those 20 that have, have gone elsewhere. Uh, and Ryan Kerwin from, from Penn state, our, our favorite team, 26 points for him. He even got a, a Providence transfer. Bennett Shymek with 17 points as a sophomore coming over uh, and uh, another draft pick, a defenseman from Clarkson, a drafted player there. Um, now you've got to weigh that against who they've, who they've seen leave in the transfer portal, namely Tim Lovell, 37 point player from the point um, that kind of a, a Sean type uh, power play specialist. He's transferred to Michigan. That's a big loss for them. Probably their best player last year. And then their starting goal goaltender, TJ Sempton Belcher. He's the latest addition to the North Dakota transfer portal goaltender. Uh, merry go round. Um, and the goalie that they brought in was this Luke Pavisic from UMass who put up some like Gavin Enright type, type numbers for, for uh, UMass last year. Uh, or for uh, for Lowell, he also he's a second he also, transfer for he's, him. So he's, he's two time. So he's got a couple of uh, teams at the Hockey East that he's had some experience with. But and I know they had another goalie on roster. I, their big question mark would be goaltending because I'm not sure Pavisic is necessarily going to be like a step in day one type starter for them. Um, but that that. Uh, those additions they got that I mentioned are certainly good additions. I'd put that up against uh, any other team in terms of like four quality um, point producers forwards. Um, that's definitely good. Now you could say the same thing last year from them, Septon Felcher, they got from Northeastern who's kind of a hot prospect in the portal last year. That was seen, seen as a pretty good pickup as well as this Alex Young from Colgate. I think he put up like a 30 or 40 point year for Colgate the year before Young kind of had an off year disappointing year, let's say didn't put up the kind of numbers that I'm sure Arizona state fans were projecting that he could put up based on his output at Colgate. Um, they've been generally pretty decent at uh, getting guys out of the portal. Um, I think their geography and kind of the, it's a, it's a sexy spot for, for potential transfer players. And so I think that naturally you can kind of get used to them being active and, you know, finding an aptitude and getting guys out of the portal, but that doesn't necessarily translate into success and certainly not NCAA tournament appearances, which it's been a while since that's been the case. Now, obviously it's a little bit different now as a, a conference member rather than being an independent, but um, I still wouldn't certainly wouldn't put them odds on to win the conference. I, I wouldn't say they're going to be six though, but I'm not sure. I, I don't think I would put them as a, a home ice team at this point. So I would say probably closer to six, certainly closer to six than, than first than one, but I'll split the difference a little bit. Yes. I think that it was a good, good haul for them. They did lose some key players though as well. And it's not like we're adding these good players from the portal onto the uh, 97 Red Wings. So um, I'll, I'll pump the brakes there on first place. Uh, on first place. Yeah. I don't, I'll, it'll be really interesting how, you know, when, when we start doing our previews and prediction shows um, and, and kind of go over all of that, because um, 
just with all the shuffling, you know, kind of once I refresh myself and, 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 and get to a point where I'm looking to more to see where I think teams are going to finish because like right off the top of my head, obviously I'm going to be bullish on St. Cloud. North Dakota is always going to be up there. Denver, I mean, is, is, is Denver, but then, you know, is this finally the time where CC makes, makes a push? So it's the time where Omaha does, you know, it's like, you know, Arizona state, where are they going to factor into the mix? And obviously, you know, Miami's going to be terrible. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see, you know, where I end up moving and shaking everyone and, and, and placing everybody in, in the league. Cause it's going to be, it's going to be a fun league to watch. And I don't even know where I'm going to place really a lot of, except obviously Arizona state at six. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I liked I the question on that now. <laughs> I liked the question because it got me shaking some cobwebs off, off the brain mm-hmm. in terms, terms of, as you said, kind of digging into how these teams are looking. And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to kind of deep diving with certain teams. You know, like we saw in the in the draft, Western didn't have a drafted player. It seems like every year we go into a season saying Western, I, like, what are they? But yet they crank out like the best top line in the country every mm-hmm. year for the last three years, and they find a way. Like they're they're always tough. But but then again, it's like they were sixth place last year, so they're kind of like an enigma. Uh, you mentioned with CC, I, I've kind of been bearish on them, but Duluth too. We, I keep hearing about Duluth's great recruiting class coming in. They were supposed to be, you know, way better than what they were last year, certainly at seventh place. Uh, yeah. I think I said the last year it that be more fun to watch. <laughs> Duluth is never, hope. never fun to watch. <laughs> um, it's probably going to be like last year. Well, last year we said, I said, at least the only team I had pe- like penned in with pen, not with pencil into any position was Miami at eighth. I can't yeah. even do that this year because there's nine teams now. Um, so I would have to pen them into ninth probably, but, uh, and I still would probably, that'd be my most confident pick. <laughs> probably. I, mean, I don't, I don't see us changing. They, as we that. mentioned, we, they can't do, they can do worse than one conference win, but that would be something if they didn't even clear that bar, but you got to figure they're going to be ninth place in everybody's preseason poll. But mm-hmm. aside from that, Good luck. I, the Huskies, yeah. I was, I think, I feel like I was bit last year by being a little too high on them, uh, picking them to, to win the conference. Now, in reality, it wasn't that far off, but it was certainly a little too, too high as it turned out. And uh, so I, I, I'm probably going to be underselling them this year in terms of that seems to be the better mindset for a St. Cloud team is set the bar low and then they exceed those expectations mm-hmm. rather than living up to sky high expectations. But yeah, we'll get into that next, uh, probably next show, maybe more of the same of this, a lot of banter, <laughs> random of banter. drunkenness from, from Travis, and I random box scores, who, whatever who, who knows? random two thousands player that we spend 10 minutes, uh, discussing minutes the career out. of, we don't even know yet and you'll find out, but next show probably gonna be similar to this, but then starting in September, you know, women start what 22nd of September, something like that. So, I mean, we're, Oh yeah. We're less than 60 days from puck drop for St. Cloud hockey season. So um, one more kind of shenanigans podcast, but then come September, we're getting into previews. So we're, we're, uh, we're going to be getting some Husky hockey sooner than you think. Or I might, you know, talk a lot about Brett Borgen. Who knows? Well, don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's uh disqualified from from uh going on the brett borgen uh binge i mean that is true he did Next play time. for the gophers so we'll find there's so many of those guys though so, <laughs> so we'll, we'll find one and we I'll, will delight you with uh yeah. with our recollections i'll go back to sam zapkowitz could do that well 
Why it. did Motsko switch so many players from forward to defense and vice versa? That's so weird. He didn't do that with Zabkowitz. Yeah, he played a did couple he? games at forward. Did yeah. he? That I don't uh-huh. remember. Oh, yeah. As far as the, the D slash forward guys, I really can only remember Storm and Raby as being guys. No, I remember Zabkowitz did too. Yeah, I don't remember that. No. But. But. Anyway, that about does her. That about does her. Right. And so, uh, I'm Weldy at more clappers, M O A R, more clappers on the X machine, I guess is what we'll call it. Andrew, where can we find you? Andrew at greenground.net can send me a post. I've got some stamps, so <laughs> you can uh, you hit me up. Share. Um, or you can send an email, huskies hockey podcast at gmail.com i haven't checked that i should check it right now check it right now see what's in there i i'm not i'm not on my i, I i'll check it i'm not on the right computer to check it on right now but all right well, we'll email, check it next month and i'll check it next month yeah <laughs> there we go well hopefully adulski didn't uh, email you and say oh hopefully by the not. way don't 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 release that schedule yet well it's too late <laughs> now <laughs> so all right uh until next time go huskies Woo!